now we have sound. This was, uh, Do we have sound now? This was muted. Which one was muted? One thing was muted. Do we have sound now? No, no. No? no? Wait, wait, wait. G give them a few seconds. Do we have sound now? Yes. Now we have sound. All right. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Nothing happened. Let's do it again. Okay, welcome back. To the gym, the SMB gym. First of all, it didn't take us a year to do another live stream. No, it took us like a month. We just had five minutes of sound problems. Oh. Um, Classic. We're, we're back and we're back in the gym. Yes. Because? Because I promised that I would shave my hair if we raise enough money to have Exalters funded today, by the end of the stream. Which I cannot allow. He doesn't want to. I don't want you to. <laughs> so I'm going to be protective and I'm going to be deadlifting instead of Erwan shaving his head. Exactly. So how are we going to do this? For every hundred bucks that we receive today during the funding session, yeah. I'm going to do one deadlift at a hundred kilo. Exactly. Okay. So right now we are at 16,900 euros. Um, there's a tiny problem with the roadmap on the website, so it doesn't show accurately what it is at right now, but we are at 16,900 euros, which means we are 3,100 euros away from the 20,000 we need to fund exalters by the exactly. end of the, of the day. So I'll keep an eye on the roadmap. Meanwhile, we'll talk okay. about everything we've been doing in the past months. How do you feel about all those things <laughs> that we've released? I, I thought we were an RPG company first and foremost for a very long time. And like suddenly we're a, a traveling freak show. <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed how things change, um, you know, over the course of a very small period of time, but I'm, I'm really impressed how the roadmap is going. I'm really impressed how the community has grown since we did the, the big release. I'm incredibly happy that we had put two products out last watch and new answers. And, um, you know, now we're, we're to going towards the third one. Um, I think um, the, the feedback we've gotten from the community was very motivational. Um, uh, the the Metaplot channel has exploded, as I said a couple of days ago. And, um, you know, I, uh, it's for, for us creators, it's, you know, the, the very biggest achievement to see such a lively community and such lively discussions come out of everything. I, I think, you know, you as a... As, as an artist, as a writer, as a, as a designer, could not hope for a better response yeah. in, in any sort of way. What yeah. about you? Um, I think it's been surprising to see both ends of the spectrum. Um, I've been very humbled by um, the amount of what I would call the small donors, the micro donors yeah. that we see on the, in the credits of the roadmap, but also so the, the huge amount of people donating a small amount of money, which basically make up for the foundation of uh, the progress of the roadmap. And then suddenly we have people that are crazy enough to be like, OK, if you if you reach that amount, I give the last uh, 100 bucks or the mm. last 500 bucks yeah. or just in the middle of the day, be like, OK, I'll just drop 250 bucks. And and the dynamic that it creates in the community is pretty impressive to me. That's something I was not expecting. Um, and. Why, why do you think, like, what is the, what is the precedent that it sets? Well, I think, I think it, it, it just showed that the community is, um, is so loyal to each other. Like, to me, that's, that's how I see it. It's like I see people being so loyal to each other that they push themselves to, to support us so that everybody can get the company. Yeah. And I think this is, this is exactly what we wanted to do and achieve, but I never expected it to show in this kind of way. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, just, it's kind of so it's like, oh, yeah, we've achieved what we wanted, but at the same time, oh, I didn't feel... I didn't expect it to go this way, to make me feel this way. Well, to be, uh, to be completely honest with you, like it was really hard for me to focus on anything that was going on because I was so knee deep in the production of the last two booklets. Yeah. Um, uh, the first last watch, which basically got funded a week after we finished the, the last Q and A. Yep. Uh, and me and Liam went straight into production for that um, uh, right after we finished the Q and A. And so we were busy writing that. And then um, while Ricardo was finishing the art, I was already over on Pneumancers with Chris with, yeah. and then uh, Chris and I punched through that book booklet pretty much. We overshot what we initially anticipated as 20, 28 pages, brought it up to 32 plus uh, a map. Yeah. And um, uh, from there, things spiraled pretty much out of control. Like I, I've been in pre-production land for well, like literally the last five weeks, um, pre-developing Lex Talionis yeah. uh, together with Liam. 
and pre-developing exalters with uh, with Chris. And so I have been I've been barely able to catch up with everything that is uh, happening all around. Like I peek into the Discord every now and then, and I'm like, <gasps> what the fuck? There's like two thousand messages again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's um it's the golden era for the Discord. It's um, very active. The meme channels are active again. The meta plot yeah. discussion is. I mean, since New Monster has been released, it's basically every day yeah, there's people yeah, uh, yeah. talking over there, which is always, it's always very interesting as a dev. Um, I will, I, I've, I've been used to the other side of, the, of the, the story for a long time. And as a dev, I love seeing people talking in the tablet discussion. I, I always love seeing people being like, okay, what do you think this means? And well, I think it's the, it's the core element that brings all the fans together somehow. Like, uh, be, they, uh, like be it that they're involved with the meta plot as a as a piece of material that they want to yeah. you know unravel or be it that they need it for their game or be it that it's like a clue that they're missing to understanding the greater scope of 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 the universe or be it just to you know like enjoy the the, the, the community puzzle i think the meta plot channel is definitely the 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 more lively part of what brings the community yeah. together but like we've also seen a big spike and in, increase in, in in community members and new members coming yeah. in like over 200 members uh, that we got Easy, since, yeah. the, since the last uh, live. Um, I mean, besides that, I mean, the shop launch was also super successful. That was like probably the best, the best By sales far. month of all time. Since, By far. Um, I mean, since we've been publishing the Genesis, I think um, uh, suffice to say, like we've made a third of our yearly revenue on the game in the last month alone, um, which <laughs> is... I mean, huge for us, absolutely huge for us, and it's huge for the game. It just shows that there is a real and, and ever-growing demand for uh, this system, yeah. and people can experience it still because everything is available free to play the, the minute it's, it's done. Like, the minute it's done, we render the PDFs out, we update the book section, people download it right away, they can read it, and then eventually they still come and shop, and that's awesome. It's just a really very supportive kind of situation right now and I'm, I'm more than I'm more than happy about that even though we had like a few crazy situations in the last week with our warehouse getting flooded yeah um, let's not talk about <laughs> like we had monsoon season in, in Berlin pretty much so um, uh, it was a huge almost tropical thunderstorm that came through yeah. um, and flooded half of our warehouse and then from there uh, what else Yerji got really sick he's out um, we love you, buddy. Yeah, we miss we, you so much. We love the years. Um, Where did my life shall go? I don't know. You have to close it. <laughs> and then what else? What else happened? Um, yeah, Ricardo is on vacation. He's moving. Yeah. Liam is on vacation. He's visiting friends in Edinburgh. Actually, he's about to touch down any minute right now. He you just texted me. Yeah. Um, and so, like, the team is a little bit all over the place. So the next two weeks are going to be much slower in terms of updates. Um, but once everybody's back on deck, we're, we're going to continue. Commence. Liam is in the chat. He made it in is time. Is he? Oh, he made it? Yes, he made it in time. Oh, that's awesome. Fantastic. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and I mean, a bunch of other stuff have, uh, have been going on in the background. We've had uh, the people from uh, Red Moon Roleplaying doing an actual play of Last yeah. Watch. Yeah, uh, that just got posted on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, posted on Tuesday. We have... Um, we've made, we've given some interviews to a bunch mm -hmm. of media. We're finally working towards getting maybe a distribution deal in the U.S. So it's like everything is slowly working yeah. uh, out for us. Um, and and this this accumulation of positive um, energy and feedback and um, and comments and emails for, we receive from people are just uplifting. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think it's fantastic that we see some people some people that we. We, we knew the name of for a long time finally joining the discord and being like hey i support you or can i give you more or can i support you even more uh, i have like a few names that come into my mind like dana thomas or people like that yeah. there we, we've known for a long time and but we didn't know who they were and finally they're joining the community and to me it's like we may have found a way to bring all these people together mm -hmm. I, I personally, my highlight of this week was the interview that we had with Jerry. Oh, I, yeah. Jerry was just such a nice, nice person. What's the... What? On tabletop. On tabletop. Yes. Okay, so these guys are, are really, really kind. I, like, I, had, I didn't have, have a good interview experience like that in a very long time. And 
he was just genuinely interested in the game, wanted to like dive deep into the production. Um, we, we, we had a really, really good chat with him. Yes. So I'm really looking forward to that interview being released. And Liam also had a... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He followed up after, after we left. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's been a good month. It's been a very good month. Um, I'm very excited for uh, the release of Lex Talionis and all the other stuff. Uh, that are coming afterwards, yeah. Exalters, if we manage to fund it tonight. Yeah. Um, and then later this year, of course, uh, the art books. And all I mean, one, one thing that I need to say about Lex Talionis, um, like to the community itself, like please guys don't expect us to promote a lot of the illustrations of Lex, just because they're so spoiler driven. Yeah, that's true. Like we would give away the entire adventure. So we're going to keep that one under wraps and then we're going to like until all the way until release and then release all, yep. all of it in one go. Um, so if if we're a little bit more silent about it, we just don't want to give anything away about that adventure at the moment. Uh, just to give you guys a bit of, a, of an update, we are 240 euros shy of the um, of the first thousand euros. Oh my god, I really have to do this shit. Yeah, yeah, you will. Oh my god. <laughs> Come on, guys. Pump it up, pump oh, it up. No. You are like 132 people, it can go up very, very fast. Oh no. If each of you gives like 10 bucks, we are uh, almost at uh, 2,000 euros uh, 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 raised. Oh. <laughs> so go for Why it. Why did I sign up for if this? If you don't know the link, thegenis.com slash support uh, dash us, you can give the money. In the meantime, is there anything that uh, we want to talk about specifically? Well, we want to talk about Pneum Answers going uh, onto the shop actually right now. No? Wait, it's live. Oh, it's live? Is it live already? <laughs> it should okay. be live. Well, you can, get, guys, you can go check, but technically it should be live. Uh, we can check it right away. Uh, the Genesis, English, and then at the very bottom. Oh, yeah, there it is. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the bundles will be updated afterwards. It takes a bit more time. Yeah. So if you want bundles, please wait. Uh, but no matter is live. And no matter is live. What else? Well, I mean, uh, unfortunately, we were expecting Last Watch to, uh, to be in our hands today, but uh, the printers didn't manage to, to send it in time for us. So it's we won't come, be able. It's going to come next week for sure. Yes. And then we're going to start shipping it out. Yes. Um, the same goes for like we were expecting prototypes for the Discord edition, for the Stealth edition, and the, yeah. uh, the Honor edition to be here by now. Again, it's delayed. It's been it's been a pain in the ass to you know like work with the delays, but uh, we're I mean it's really not on our end. We, we just have to we just have to deal with what the printer can give us. And since we're bombing the printer with so many products, they're they're running, you know, behind schedule yeah. as well on their end. Yeah, yeah. Um, and today, uh, Yelena uh, dropped her uh, art yeah. prints. Yeah. So there's a bunch of new art prints on the shop for the the art lovers. Um, but yeah, to me, New Monsters has been really the highlight of the month. Um, it's been, it's, I mean, if we talk about the book itself, I think it's such a brilliant book just because it gathers everything that makes the Genesis is good, but in 32 pages, it's like meta plot heavy. It's very culturally distinct because the Pneumarsus come from a very specific space and time of uh, the, the history of the Genesis. And it also goes deep down into a very specific location that is Nulpelia and how it works and what is like the, the mechanics of, literally the mechanics of the city. I mean, to me personally, the best part about the booklet is that Chris was back and I could just finally brainstorm with the original mind of, of the Genesis yeah. again. You know, like for me, that, that was like the, the concluding part, especially considering that that was our very first co collaboration 20 years ago. Yeah. And then like having that anniversary come up um, and him being like so inspired as well to contribute and in, 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 you know develop the the Pneum answers further. Um, that was really like the the thing that you know motivated us as a as a as a team to just push through and like really deliver something great. And what we have in store for Exalters is insanity. So I'm I'm really I'm really excited about putting that book together. I know he's writing his parts right now. Um, we just finished pre-production uh, like earlier this week. Um, where we went through the whole setup of, of the of the booklet, uh, divided it down into into like a, a feasible structure, mm -hmm. um, uh, went through the the talking points that we want to hit, and then we also started developing art in the meantime. And Ricardo has been just killing it yeah. on, on his own. Um, again, maybe we want to show a little bit of that so people okay. have a, an incentive to, you know, uh, post some money. Yes, we can. Uh, we can start with the uh, do what the opener or the archetype. Um, whatever you want. Well, let's start with the opener. 
the opener is on. So you guys can see what... Uh, we're not going to talk about what it not is. No, <laughs> I'm not, uh, we're five, five dollars away from the first, oh, no. uh, for okay, the first I'll, 10 I'll... lifts. Uh, but yeah, Ricardo has been killing it. Uh, it was his present before moving. Uh, yeah, he, he's out for like a few, yeah. Few he days. was so he was so eager to have the have the sketch for the opener at least in, so we could present it tonight. Um, and, and you can show uh, the other one now. And then he absolutely killed it on the Exalter archetype. Yeah, please mm -hmm. keep yeah, going. You can keep going. Um, but yeah, fin I mean, fantastic work. The guy is is a machine. I, I can't even I can't even start to describe how f powerful this guy is. He's just the best in the best mood ever, every day, no matter what it is. Like no matter if like the house is on fire or he needs to move or he needs to do something crazy, he's just in such a good mood. Like I love working with him. So yeah, that's the that's the archetype from the booklet, um, the player archetype. You know the the spiel. It's uh, always. Um, a nice little crown image for us uh, to showcase and I have to go off camera. Yeah. All right, All right, people, give me the vibe because today, for the first time live, Marco is going for 10 deadlift. 10 deadlift at 100 kilo. I'm gonna do some music to go with it because we can't um, really put music on YouTube. So please bear with me. I'm gonna no, do- No, no, don't sing, you idiot. No, no, I'm, I'm gonna do a, a bit of Kermit, uh, Kermit live, but no, seriously, it's uh, it's like you know that weightlifting has been uh, such a good thing for us in the past. So now we want Marco to go and uh, impress us with those ten one hundred oh, kilo. Up. Let's go, Marco. Let's go, my friend. And one. Let's go. Two. And three. Four. Let's go. Kidding me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. And we're almost done. And here we go. Beast. Keep talking. People, we can keep going. We have those fantastic two other lifts to do afterwards. So guys, keep pumping the money. You know what to do. We are at 17,980 euros already. So it's, uh, it's uh, already, uh, it's already a lot. Um, so yeah, as, as we were discussing, uh, Ricardo has been killing it. This guy is, is a machine and I can't wait personally to see what he's gonna deliver for the rest of uh, Lex Talionis and Exalters. Um, no, Marco is not gonna be a muscular ring by tomorrow. This is like, it's crazy for him. It's not crazy for him, it's like classic. It's, it's like what, 50% of uh, his, uh, his power. So don't be afraid for the miracle. And he's back. <sighs> the beast is back. It's just the volume that kills me, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about the intensity, it's the volume. <laughs> so uh, where are we? Uh, name one other RPG company where you can pay to see the other do the lift. You can't, you cannot, <laughs> <laughs> you cannot. Uh, in the meantime, people, if you have questions, just shoot them in the, in the chat. We can take some of them. Um, we have a lot. Uh, what is going on? Anybody uh, asking some cool stuff? I don't know. I'm trying to. <coughs> Sorry, I'm breathing a little bit loud. Uh, <coughs> blah blah blah. Will we get this on Discord too? You will. Uh, I guess you're talking about the the openers and everything. Maybe we. We'll yeah, we'll post them later. We'll don't worry. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, we wanted to give a shout out to um, uh, our friend Greedy Jack because he. Yeah, please. He, he you finished, have all the info. He finished uh, the beta of a virtual fun a foundry uh, VTT uh, Armsway Adventure, if I'm not mistaken. So the module is ready to be played, and we wanted to give him like a, a small boost for um, for this because he's been working for a long time with Vindico as well, if I'm not mistaken, and people like Mooman uh, who've been putting everything together. So big thumbs up to him, and thank you so much for your work. Uh, so about the question. Um, uh, Chris's fav favorite and least favorite thing you've written in his absence? You have to ask him. <laughs> How am I supposed to know? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was like, oh, I mean, not good. You see, well, I don't even. I, I don't even think he, he read everything. Like he's probably still catching up. I know he was catching up while while 
Numancer was developed, so he would ask me, hey, what's this about? And then we would send him ref. Yeah. I mean, poor guy has to read, like, what, 2,000 pages in, like, three <laughs> weeks? It's not going to work. Um, any chance we could get some comics at some point? We've discussed it last time already. Uh, any other media that you would like to see the Genesis in, we also would like to see the Genesis in. Yeah. And More than anything, like, I would love for a graphic novel to have the audience, but, like... The, the biggest problem about a graphic novel is this. What is Yerji everyone and the rest of the team going to do while I draw a graphic novel? You know, like, they're just going to sit around and wait for me to be done. And then I sit there for three months and I paint it. Exactly. <laughs> and then we ship it out all together. Like, it's, it's, it's not a very, like, a graphic novel is not a very collaborative uh, product or effort. You know, like, same, same goes for a novel, you know. You can do a novel. But then what is the rest of the team going to do? Like for, for now, for the way we are structured, um, I think it's much more healthy to focus on, on something that can be done with the entire team, which increases the interval of, yeah. of the releases. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, I, 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 completely, I completely agree. Um, Justician, for example, was... Uh, I won't say it was a tough time, but it was it was specific because you were working a lot. Yeah. And it was always justician. There was no, I mean, there was no marketing to do. There was like everything was just in the in the background. So it yeah. takes a lot of a, of a, it's it's a it's a weird time. Um, so yeah, I think if in the future we manage to get more people to to support the game, but also <coughs> uh, here if we manage to hire more people, that would be something that we could talk about. But. That's I mean, for, for, for me, for sure, I think what would help the most is like the, the more I can transition out of the development of the, of the regular RPGs and the more Liam and Chris can do that on their own, uh, the more I can focus on stuff that has nothing to do with, with, the, with the RPG world yeah. itself. Exactly. Um, so what else mm -hmm. do we have? Is Modus Operandi shared or will it happen? Uh, at the moment, I don't think it will happen because it would, uh, the, the budget it would require to do it the way we imagined it to be is just beyond anything that, the, 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 that can be sustainable yeah. or that we can afford at this point. We would have to have like a much bigger crowd and audience to sell that particular ideation to than we have at the moment. It's just, it's just, it's just not feasible. Mm. Um, I think it's a budgetary issue. Like it, like already our products cost so much to produce and that one in particular would like blow everything out of yeah. the park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it will, it's also like if we do it, <coughs> we're not working on anything else because it's yeah. a product you need to be completely focused on. So if we do it, then we're, um, we're not working on the roadmap. <laughs> um, uh, so we are. What else do we have? Did the mechanism come from before the 100 cascade? I don't know. <laughs> That's for you guys to figure uh, out. Uh, is next session to take place? On, whoa, whoa, whoa. Elon Musk has 30. Uh, okay, I don't understand this question. Um, come on, guys. Keep shooting the questions. Um, Roadmap 2 features West Borka. Which region is planned for number 2? Oh, it is too early to talk about roadmap yeah. too. Like, like we're on the fourth on the fourth item right now. Like, <laughs> let let us let's finish this roadmap first. Let it let it get funded completely, which would be the best. Get it let, let it get funded completely, and then we'll we'll deliver all the assets to you guys, and then we will figure out what we're gonna do next. Already at eighteen thousand three hundred fifty bucks. Wow. Your your um, <coughs> mm, four hundred fifty bucks away, five hundred fifty bucks away. Yeah. Um, I saw a question, is, the, is there any plans for a book in the future? I think you're talking about the roadmap booklets. Um, it's a bit early to talk about that because it depends. First, we can talk about what's going to come with everything from the roadmap until everything has been released and funded. And, and second of all, I, I do think like the roadmap booklets themselves right now, they need to first sell for a while yeah. before we consider anything like a compilation or an omnibus off of them yeah. um, because that like the sell-off would inspire us to do a hardcover it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that the the the, the booklets are not selling and then we, we just we would decide like, okay, okay let's do a hardcover <laughs> on top of everything and then yeah. not sell anything yeah that wouldn't be the that wouldn't be the solution no so that would not once we smart. see good sales on the on the booklets themselves and once all the items are out then we can talk about it i think 
Is there a place to post some homebrew adventures? Yeah, you can go on uh, Discord uh, and we have several channels where you can share your stuff. Um, and there's also like uh, the Genesis cluster that is um, it's a nice platform where you can share your, your things, very simple to use. Um, okay, what else do we have? Uh, Maurice Operandi, we already answered that. Do we have no other question? Uh, I saw the open part of the Sigma Vodka website and I was wondering what is the project, another RPG, art book? Yeah, it's... Uh, It'll come out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same thing, exactly the same as the comics. If we want this kind of thing to happen, we need to make sure that we have a team that can take over for the Genesis to maintain uh, its existence online. Exactly. So I mean, like, the, as long as I'm still so deeply involved with the production of the Genesis, there is no new project coming. Um, the moment a new project is coming is when there is enough people on the team that can shoulder my burdens and I can distribute all, all, my, all my responsibilities to enough yeah. other people outside so I can actually start focusing on something new. I think that's, that's really what people need to understand. Like a project only moves forward when all the other um, uh, open construction sites are, are basically closed for me. So as long as there's open construction sites, there's very hard or there's very little room to start something new or to really focus on something new because you always have to do it in, in, in like some small pockets of, of, of weekend time that yeah. you get for yourself. And I, I really don't want to do that. I really don't think a new project is, is created out of, you know, um, out of such small time frames or tight schedules. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it also doesn't make sense to completely stop the Genesis like while it's, it's expanding yeah. just yeah. to say, okay, well, bye bye. We're doing, we're going yeah. to do something yeah. else uh, right now. Uh, I've seen a bunch of questions about the character creator and everything. I know that you guys really, really want to see more updates on this, uh, but it takes a lot of time and it's also a lot of budget to make any change to this tool. Um, I try to add what can be added, but anything related to clans is really, really complicated because it completely changed the way the tool is structured. So I think about it, but it's a budget and time question. So I cannot give you a definitive uh, answer right away. Yeah. Um, how do you enjoy other RPG books now that you own the Genesis books? That's not a question for us to answer. <laughs> well, I don't even own other other RPG books. I would, I don't think I would ever. I think I bought I bought D and D like three years ago, which because I just wanted to see what the quality of the printed material was, and it just wasn't satisfying. I I, I remember I flipped through. I bought the books. I flipped through them once. I just couldn't make myself read it, and I just felt like it was not it was not a high quality premium product. Like it was a good product, but not a high quality premium product that you would expect from the leader on the market. Yeah, I mean, the you know, D&D books have like a very different paper than what yeah, we use. Yeah, yeah. Uh, literally, very easily like half uh, the weight of our paper. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a big difference. When don't, make, don't let me cool off too, too long. Um, yeah, uh, we are like 18,350 bucks. So it hasn't on. moved in the past few minutes. How is the Korea edition going on? They're doing their things and they're still uh, planning to release in everything December. in December, mm -hmm. end of the year. Um, blah, blah, blah. Did you guys ever do some brainstorming about solo role playing rule add on like Oracle? No. no. Like, we don't really, we've talked about it a lot. Uh, we are not really into mechanics and rules. Like, we're not into, like, um, how can I say that? Expanding not, the Genesis on a, yeah. on, a, on a mechanical scale. We're not mechanics wizards or stuff like this. We're yeah. more oriented on the narrative aspect yeah. and the, yeah. the setting aspect of the game, but we're not like really turning into focusing on the, the rules and making sure on the crunch, let's say. Uh, what else do we have? When you play the game among the SMV team, I can end the question right away. We're not playing the game among us. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't. Like, I mean, like, I, w I would really love to do. Um, to do a session here and there, but like there's never time and if you work if you work on the property the whole day The last thing you want to do is play the property at night. <laughs> that's just the, that's just the way it is You I, know like you can't eat steak non-stop. I plead guilty. I was playing for uh, what? Three four years until this year and yeah. I, I stopped play. I stopped mastering because I can't anymore like yes, yeah. I need a break um, we thought about playing uh, but we would need to have, for example, Liam coming in. Yeah, yeah, we have to designate an actual yeah. week to it, you know, like when the team is together in-house and then we just do, you know, like 
one campaign with the with the pre-existing group and we enjoy our time together you know but like it's not something that you can do in in in, in some sort of consistency yeah exactly i mean i would love to i would love because it's such like a team a team of people that know the game so well could only lead to a fun and very exciting adventure yeah, yeah. um that's something i i mean i would love to uh, but unfortunately, it'll happen. Sometimes. The team being like spread every, everywhere is uh, something that we need to fix. Yeah, and, and it's not like traveling is like yeah, super easy. Right corona now. is not really helping with this. Yeah. Um, will the Agatopoia be the last big book, Adventure Plus Mass Massive Lore, or will the story find a conclusion in some other book? Who says that it will be one book? Uh, how do you come up with the genesis? Was it meant to be a RPG? From the start, or you started writing the lore, and eventually it came out like it did. I think the story has been told many, many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's all originating in us being like Chris and me being like really <laughs> uh, unsuccessful artists, and us wanting to do something that uh, 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 would please us. We both were world builders and designers, and we just wanted to do our thing, yeah. like, um, where nobody tells us what we need to draw or what we need to write, but it's something that is completely just our own and. Um, that was the only motivation behind it. Like really, that that's what it comes down to. You want to own the things you do. You like as a, I've been a production artist for 25 years, and uh, out of the hundreds of properties that I worked on, I don't own any except for the Genesis. For me, that's a very, it's a very important factor in my life. You know, like I want to go back to that one project that I really can devote my life and my my identity to, and that means the the world to me if I can actually work on it like I, I think that is um, that is a driving goal behind it that's why I stuck around for such a long time yeah yeah and I mean I think yeah from the get-go it was meant to be an RPG and yeah. it will remain an RPG for a long time yeah. until we manage to expand it yeah um, about how about if you all complete the roadmap you play a game maybe streamed to celebrate Sure, we could, we, could, yeah. we could imagine something like that. But since you guys know us, and since you know the quality that we put into things, you know it's going to be the most overproduced stream of all time. It's not going to be something that yeah. can be done in a heartbeat. Like, we're, we're just going to put all the energy into it, and then uh, you're not going to hear from us for four weeks because we're all in, 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 in planning mode with 80 cameras. And <laughs> <laughs> Andy being like, oh my god. And 60 people in the background lighting us perfectly and everything. Um, yeah, we're, we're thinking about a bunch of stuff we can do in the future, but it will come up like probably in September, so stay tuned. Uh, G Jerry asking, what could, I, I imagine you're the Jerry, the one that we had a, Possibly, a very, yeah. very nice call yeah. with, so thank you so much for the time you uh, granted us. Um, blah, 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 I just missed your question. So what would be a good way for people to grow the community? Normally things like drive through RPG would be a place for people to find games, but with the website being self-contained, it is kind of hidden. So. You will be very happy to know that all the PDFs, except for Numancer, that I no Numancer is available yeah. also. All the PDFs are available for free and pay what you want on uh, Drive Through RPG. We're not very active and we're not using all the tools that uh, Drive Through RPG gives us, but everything is available over there. And when it comes to growing the community itself, the only thing that we can ask the people to do is to talk about the game outside of Discord. Discord is fantastic for so many reasons, just because the community over there is so friendly, loyal to each other, funny. We have our um, shared history and identity, especially after this one year of Corona together. And we um, have our friends there as well. We have a lot of so, friends. So many, so many good people and good heart, good minded yeah. individuals that we've met over the years um, yeah. that, that are all you know connected through that Discord. So obviously we as the developers are attracted to it, to, to hang out with that fun. Yeah. The downside of this is that Discord is self-contained, self -contained, not easy to find, and the chatter about the game is mostly content there, so you, you cannot find the game if you don't know about the game. So what we could ask for the community, or at least suggest, is to go talk about the game outside, go talk about the game on forums, go ask your favorite YouTubers, streamers, whoever you want to talk about the game, do a review, talk about it on social networks. Um, we. They can people can contact us really we're very easy to reach out to and like i can i can only suggest for you to make it public um, we are really thinking about new ways of communicating about the game which is one of the reasons why we're we're, we're amping up on on streaming yeah you know like this this will be a, more of a reoccurring thing now that we figured out how to do it best and um you're gonna see us more much more often than 
in the, in the past couple of years, but like we are really trying to find new ways to communicate the game to the outside world, outside of the Discord. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean Discord doesn't mean anything to us anymore. No, no more, more than that, we want to attract <laughs> more people to the Discord and, and figure out how we can bridge those worlds and, and, and make both sides, you know, yeah. meet each other and yeah, find yeah. each other. One thousand percent. I think I think the um, finding the balance is very important. Um, the thing, as Marco said, is like Marco, Liam, and everybody is basically f like focused on producing producing the content. So um, communicating about the game falls back on my and Valerie's shoulders, and we're it's more complicated than anything I've ever experienced in my life. So we really try. We are really working on a lot of different options. Um, but it takes time. If I mean, it's also it, the downside of the size of the company. Like, we're yeah. a small company. When we produce something, mm -hmm. we're producing something. When we market something, we market yeah. something. But we can't, like, we barely have the ability to do two things at the same exactly. time. It, it just, like, there's always a loss of manpower uh, involved. So we completely rely on the community to make things viral and to spread the news yeah. around and, and, and attract new new people to the game. I completely forgot we did the, uh, we did the uh, eggs thing. <laughs> Yes, we did the eggs. Yes, <laughs> that yes, was that fantastic. Was awesome. That this was, was awesome. really fantastic. Uh, will there be a Degenesis Con someday? Who knows? I mean... Once we, Corona is gone, though? Yeah, I mean, I would love nothing else than just see more people again. Like, I miss, I miss bringing the Genesis to conventions. Like, we had, we had the best experience with the, with the game in Italy twice when we went to Luca, to yeah. the Luca uh, uh, Games Fair. Um, uh, we sold incredible amounts of stock and, and people were just genuinely really, really happy for us to, to be on the spot and we always had good experience there. So I would really love to you know travel again with the book and just present it anywhere. And then once that is possible, then you know, like why not at Genesis Con and bring some some of these crazy people from the Discord out. Yeah. Um, and um, see where we can actually hang out together. Yeah. People, we are still stuck at 18,360 bucks. Yes. So that's 540 bucks away from the one, the other 1,000. It's only five lifts. So I mean, it's like, come on. Yeah. So <laughs> like spam it up. Um, do you each have spam a Spam it up. Yes. Yeah, spam it up. <laughs> spam it up. Do you each have a favorite NPC? Uh, I do. You do? Of course I do. Who? Decoy 5. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> of I course. Always forget, I always forget. I always like. <laughs> Yeah, Decoy 5 by far, I think it's uh, the love of my life since uh, the first time I read in there, but I was like, wow, I love this character so much. Aww. So cool. No, I don't think I have one. It's, it changes so many times. Yeah. It's always like the one that I'm writing. Because <laughs> 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 uh, it's my favorite yeah. for five minutes and then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I need to write somebody else. Um, no, I just, I don't. I think like the, the one that has stuck around the longest is uh, the Mother of Ravens just because of, you know, her her creepiness and general value to the world, but like I I wouldn't be able to name a single character. I like them all. I like them all, I laugh at them all. You know, they're like old friends, you know, I meet them and say hi to them and they remember or remind me of somebody and King Cockroach. It's good. It's a good it's a good character. Come on, I thought I, I thought I was gonna get you. <laughs> oh hi Valerie, how come you guys look so good on camera? We do what we can. That's why we work out so much. <laughs> No, it's actually all Andy's fault. <laughs> um, okay, so what else do we have? Uh, the last one was a blast. Last watch is a very brutal combat-oriented adventure. What type of scenario will be the next release? Lex Talionis. I mean, Lex, Tal <laughs> Lex Talionis will... I mean, I can't really talk about it because it will spoil the adventure, but I can tell you it will be much more complex than Last Watch. Last Watch was still, you know, something that intermediate characters can handle. Lex Talionis will require a lot of a lot of player agency to to you know get through the milestones of the of the adventure. Yeah. It's uh, uh, it's more high level uh, than than last one. Yeah. Last but one. that's what we imagined initially anyway. Yeah. So Harm's Way is the beginner. And yeah. Then last watch is like the the next increment, and then it slowly escalates in 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 terms intensity of, and everything. Yeah, exactly. Like the the. the um, the scale of the adventure and the, what's at stake is yeah. like each time more important. Yeah. Um, and you can already read it like in the, in the description, in the roadmap, like everything is already stated. Um, uh, do you plan to publish a more sandbox like adventure? Justician is the best sandbox book that we can ever produce. Yeah. Like I really don't think 
what would be a sandbox adventure? Me writing generic sentences like, if the characters do this, then this happens, and if the characters do this, then this happens, yeah. and like it's just, it I, sounds so it sounds so I think boring it's, it, to I produce. Think, I think it's also not the DNA of the Genesis. Yeah. Um, I, I I've been discussing it with a lot of different people over the course of the years, and I, I since I've worked here, it's it's even clearer to me. It's like the Genesis is not a game that you can really prepare an adventure that is meaningful and make it sandboxy at the same time. Um, everything we're doing, for example, in the roadmap is like very, is like much easier to approach and doesn't take as much investment and preparation, but it's still very meaningful for the type of experience that you want the yeah. players to have. But sandboxy is not something, I personally don't think that's something that publishers should be doing because sandboxy is something that a, a GM wants to prepare. You want as a GM to prepare an adventure that is open enough that you can pr you can adapt to what your players are doing but as a publisher this is not in your best interest to do it yeah. because you you just lose yourself and fill a page count with open ended hooks and options yeah. which is basically <laughs> the source books it's yeah. basically everything that we've published that is setting oriented I, in my but opinion I, mean, at like, least. I, I think just this leaves enough room for everybody to be like to enjoy it as a sandbox like you don't need to you know, even touch any of the NPCs, you have enough room to explore within the city and within the protectorate to like go on for ages and and, and build your own campaigns out of it. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I, I keep thinking about like Moloch, for example, in the book, not yeah. um, the concept. Um, I mean, it's the best. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but in terms of hooks, yeah. like, it's like 100 free hooks. And uh, I mean, I say 100, it's like I'm really... Yeah, I'm you're, really you're like, low key. You're yeah, downplaying. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, downplaying yeah, a yeah. lot. Like it's like easy. Some some characters are like two or three uh, hooks uh, and connections to characters. I like that you say hooks. <laughs> hooks. It's hooks. Hooks. <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, but uh, you you have a lot of opportunities when you read this book. So I think it's we're not selling it as a like a sandboxy adventure, but it's like a source book in the purest uh, sense of the term. It's like yeah. you you read it and you have keys. Yeah. So many keys that you're lost and you don't know what to do with them. And it takes a bit of a focus to 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 make sure that you can actually... Yeah, actually, you just need to focus on one key. And that, that is it. That, that, that is your adventure right there. And then you slowly smooth into it. Nizet asking, can you shelter me at SMV offices? Anytime you want. Like yeah, that. if you come over, you can sleep here. I don't mind. Um, where, are you, where are we with the donations? We, stuck. I don't know. I don't know if it's a donor box that's bugging or if we're uh, really stuck. But it hasn't moved so far. Does it not it's move? a bit disappointing. I'm so cool. And off. Marco is uh, is gonna <laughs> is gonna is gonna cool down. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing for the past ten minutes. Yeah. Um, I first approached a game in Italy a few years ago. I would love to see you guys back here. Yeah. I mean, we would love to be back as well. Like we love Italy. We always had the best time of our lives there. Any plans to expand the lore on Africa? Yeah, we said it in the last live stream. It will happen next year. Um, okay, another question that goes back exactly to the same topic. Have you guys considered delving into creating figures for the game, such as resin casting, blah, blah, blah? Same thing as everything else, like VTT, uh, mi <laughs> yeah, minis, <clears throat> everything. Um, I mean, that's not something that we would do anyway. Yeah. We would find a partner to do it with. Exactly. We do, we don't have the we don't have the capacity and we don't have the the know how to do it right. So we would have to license it out to a, to a good and responsible partner who can guarantee the quality that we would like to see the the minis in. Like it would not. I mean, it wouldn't make sense for us to go like with any kind of partner and then like the the, the, the miniatures look like shit. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, that would be disappointing. But also, it always ties back to the same thing. Like we. We are so focused on growing the community. Once we reach a level where it unlocks much, I mean, a lot of different options, it will be very easy for us to be okay. Like we want to do, I don't know, new GM screens because we have so many new, uh, big influx of new players, or we want to do minis because we have this huge, um, like, combat-oriented uh, group. And, and I mean, sales numbers are always the main factor. If you have sales numbers to prove that 
the game is profitable, mm -hmm. then it's very easy for, for us to find partners to collaborate with. If you're, if you're working with sales numbers to just barely keep you afloat, then you know, like it's a completely different thing for somebody to invest into your IP and be like, oh yeah, I, I just yeah. want to, I just want to, you know, dump 20 grand on this and yeah. uh, hopefully turn it into some, something profitable. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for example, we are very proud of the, the, the amount of downloads that we're receiving. Um, like we have a huge number of people yeah. that are downloading the game, but yeah. downloads are not necessarily translating into sales. And yeah. so you cannot come and go to like whoever is going to make the minis and be like, okay, you look like we have a lot of people that are downloading the game for free. <laughs> Do you want to make minis that they're going to download for free as yeah. well somewhere? Yeah. Um, that's not how it works. And so if we want to, to do it properly, we need to find a way to keep uh, scaling up the size of the community. And as it scales up, more options will be open and we will be, we will gladly go into them. Like we have a lot of stuff that we would like to do. Um, but on top of the fact that we are focused on doing the roadmap right now, we, we can't like spend the money uh, in experiment on too many yeah. different things yeah. um, and take that many risks at the same time. Um, what is the funniest typo made in any Dead Genesis book that you remember and which fortunately didn't make it into the books? The, the funniest what? The funniest typo. The funniest typo? That was ever made in any Dead Genesis book. Wow, it's hard to say. I, I don't know, I don't remember. I don't remember. At least I, like, I don't remember it as funny because every time I see a yeah. typo, I want to commit suicide. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I'm the first one yelling throughout the entire studio when I spot a typo. What the fuck is that? Yeah, especially <laughs> like sometimes we, we reread something, especially for the, the booklets. For a big book like Justician, it's very complicated to spot everything. But for a booklet, when you, you send it and like f five seconds after putting it online, you're like, no, yeah. I found one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's always a moment where everybody's like, oh, no shit. Um, Okay, what else do we have? Uh, let's see, actually, did we have any change? Ooh, Holy shit! Holy shit! Uh, uh, 18,860, we're 40 bucks away. Okay. 40 bucks I'm away. Getting ready. He's getting ready. <laughs> um, in the meantime, uh, we'll never ever, ever resurface. She's an amazing character, a module based on the relentless love of a mother. It's genius. Well, I mean, we, it, she's, she, she's a very important character for Marco, I know for sure, um, but her coming back is, it's always the same thing. It, exact, it goes back to exactly the same topics we've been discussing for the, par, uh, for the past uh, minutes, is if we want to explore new stories or more, more, do more booklets or adventures and everything, we will, be, we will need more writers to push the IP forward so that Marco can focus on stuff like Agatopoia or um, anything else that we, we would be willing to do, like an Orkin or whatever. But uh, it takes time and we need to finish what we've announced before we can actually move to different, something different. So never might resurface, but it will take a bit of time before it does. And we are exactly at 18,900 bucks. Okay, so, shit. ladies and gentlemen, Marco, you, up, you told up, me to talk. Shut up, shut up, I need to focus. All right, I don't say anything. And here we are, another thousand kilos. Thank you so much, people. We are 1,000 euros shy from getting Exalters unlocked tonight. This is fantastic. I'm really, I'm really amazed. Thank you so much to everyone that's been donating. I don't see the names, but really, that's really humbling. Um, as the community grows and helps spread the news, what publication or medium would be a dream exposure for SMV and the Genesis? You talk. Yeah, uh, <coughs> I don't have any specific name that comes to my mind. I think, to me, the, the thing that I find the best is always when the, the journalist or whoever is talking about the game really takes the time to look into it and to do an even investigation about what they're talking about. Um, 
I'm not a big fan of like, the, the five lines uh, news that are just basically taking what we've written and, uh, and reshare it everywhere in mass. That's not, <clears throat> it, I mean, it doesn't bring any value and it doesn't inform the readers on what they're actually getting there, uh, what, are, what they're actually getting into. So to me, it's like anyone that does investigation on the game and take the time to talk about it, to and read it and talk about it, it's fantastic. Anyone that wants to do interviews is also, it's the best. I think interviews are the best because it's, it gives an opportunity for everyone to talk about the game on a, on, at the same level. Like the, the interviewers can ask questions that uh, without filter and you can answer without filter. And it doesn't mean that the person has to uh, make compliments about the game all the time. They can, they can ask any question they want and you can answer on a very equal basis. And I think interviews are the best format, like by far. Where are we, question-wise? Um, so Give me something that I can answer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, uh, will we get any more Black Golson art in the roadmap book specifically or in future the Genesis content? Uh, it's mm, no, I don't. I mean, um, Black Gold Sun is a is a separate is a separate beast. You know, that's Jay's label, Jay's work. She's focusing on that right now. I don't think she's gonna contribute to the Genesis anytime soon. It's like two worlds that don't merge well. Um, now you're going to plan, no, this we already answered. Yes, the roadmap on the website is very much behind. We, I, as I told earlier, we have a bit of a problem with the third party that is uh, taking care of that. So yeah. I'm sorry for-, for Yeah, it gets stuck, I mean, every now and then, and then we need to have, have them manually reset the numbers, sorry. Yeah. What? What do you? What are you gonna do after you finish the Genesis storyline? Is there any special project you guys always wanted to do other than the Genesis? Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna open up a Vespa shop in Ibiza. I'm gonna rent uh, a small motorbikes to tourists for the rest of my life. That's how I wanna spend my my fifties and my sixties. <laughs> <laughs> I I've I've destroyed uh, you know so many so many lives in in the world of the Genesis and I. I killed so many people, so many characters. I, I just need to do something that is like really harmless for a while, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my biggest dream. Um, uh, do you have a red line through the story? Do you already know how to end the story? I think you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like the, the red line was always there. It never, we never knew how long it's going to take to get to the end. But the end was pretty much clear from the very beginning. Like, we never had a very... Uh, you know, a very open end that we couldn't figure out on on our own. Um, but you never you never really know how many books it's gonna take to tell the story correctly. Sometimes you just need to you know wait it out until the book is there, and then you see ah oh, man this is still missing for all the gears to you know yeah. like connect. Um, and then when we figured out that we're gonna do this roadmap thing. That was like a real big eye opener for me, where I was like, "Oh, we can see all these story elements in there, and people are just not even gonna notice <laughs> that it leads to Until something else." Ends. Yeah. Um, so th that is that is really what uh, uh, inspires me the most about the roadmap at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm very happy to to know that everybody is focused on writing the, those things, but we also knowing that what we want to write helps preparing everything. Yeah. Like. It's, it's like, y you know that you have like maybe enough t work for like two or three more years, yeah. but you can prepare in advance because you know, you know that now you're like, you're on like a stretch where it's very easy to see yeah. what you're yeah. working yeah. towards. Yeah. And that's the most exciting. Um, I think people donate again. <laughs> what do we have? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's going, up. it's going. Good. Uh, I saw a question from Kilrog. Has the pace of the roadmap fulfilled your expectation or exceeded them? How does, it, how does this translate in terms of production? Can you guys keep up? Um, so in terms of expectations, I think to me it did. Um, I, how to say that? I love that we have people that are donating, as I said earlier, such big amount of money. I wish that we were seeing more smaller donors. Yeah. Because um, not that I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to say that without it sounding too negative, but like, I don't want to rely on huge on people donating huge amount of money to make us move forward because it's not solving what we're trying to solve. We want yeah. to we want to prove that the community can support us just by its sheer size 
and small donations rather than a few very motivated and wealthy donors that mm. give and come and give like 200, 300 bucks whenever they want. Which is still, it's still, I, it's still beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, but I agree. Like it would be, it would be nicer if it was distributed over yeah. a larger crowd of people. That is maybe the only negative part that I see right now. In terms of production, I think we got this stuff figured out at the moment. I think we spend most time still, still in pre-production. Like pre-production takes the longest, for all the for all the booklets, because you really want to make sure that you hit all the points, yeah. um, that you cut all the fat that is unnecessary, that doesn't need to go in there, and that you have a really strong story. Like for example, Lex Talionis had like two really good outlines, and then we trashed both, and then we yeah. wrote a third one, and the third one was the the, the outline that we went with. Um, and so I think the, the the mental effort that goes into into the pre production part is really key for the production then to speed up in, yeah. and be relatively harmless. I mean, what did it take? Liam and I, we wrote Last Watch within four days just because the outline was so strong. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, Pneumancers was written relatively fast. Chris spent a week on it and then Liam and I spent like, what, maybe five days altogether adding our yeah. stuff and then it was done. Um, what still takes the longest is the art. It's the art. I mean, it's always been and it will always be. We only have one person doing the art. Mm -hmm. We have people from the outside coming and helping us. Yeah. Like Chris Kintner came back for commercials, yeah. did two pieces. Yeah. Um, but basically... The quality level is just so high that yeah. you cannot speed it up. And what I would not or ever want to do is to you know lower the quality level just to be able to put yeah. the stuff out faster. If it takes four weeks or five weeks instead of three weeks or two weeks, it's still not, uh, you know, a big deal for anybody. Like people can wait this long, yeah. as long as they know that our quality um, is pretty much untouchable. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you look at these booklets and they're just phenomenal. Um, and that's what we want to keep. That's the strongest, unique selling point that we have compared to all of our competition. And that's what we're always going to celebrate. Yeah. And I always, I also want to say, and it's very important, like. Um, producing that much amount of illustrations in sh such a short amount of time is a feat. Like yeah. it's, it's like f spectacular yeah. by itself. Like the what Ricardo is capable of producing. I mean, like literally, literally, last watch was done in what three weeks? Not even that. Less. Less than that. Two answers. What is illustrated super fast, yeah. and he's already on Lex Talionis. Mm -hmm. And like. I think it's, it's, it always goes back to the same thing. People have no idea of what it takes to make an illustration. And so they don't understand why this is taking so long. Yeah. And in the com on, on the opposite side, writing is something that approximately everybody can imagine what it takes. And so it's like, okay, writing is easy and it goes fast. And, and like, it's, it's very com complicated to compare the, <coughs> the two of them and to realize that actually writing is done way earlier than the illustration, but the illustration We'll always take a long, I a mean, long the, amount of time. The, the sole process of writing something doesn't take long. Yeah. What takes long is coming up with the right story, coming up with the with the with the right material to connect um, into into a larger, yeah. grander thing. And that's that's really where the the most amount of time goes in. Like you should see our. I mean, like most people don't even know how, how our Slack chat looks like. It's like constantly the whole day is just discussions over over certain aspects of the game yeah. uh, that we want to shine light on. Um, I mean, I, I, the last couple of days, I like I wrote a whole book of explanations to Chris of what I was thinking about with this particular part in Exalters. You know, like it's all pre-explanation. That so that you can then put it in the perfect words. Exactly. And then when, once you sit down, once all of that is figured out, you sit down and yeah. you just write, and that's yeah. not a real that's not a real big problem for anyone. Yeah, and and Even so for a guy with two fingers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so what what it means is that we're the pace of the production for uh, the roadmap is is very good. The, the person that is working nonstop literally is Ricardo because he's jumping from one piece to the other and he has literally no break expect, except when he's, he can take days off. Uh, but that's the that's where it's really uh, like the machine keeps running all the time. Um, but otherwise, we all I mean, it's a very chill pace. OK, where are we money wise? Money wise, we are at still 18,000. 950 bucks. All right, we are at the one hour mark. When are we cutting out? Let's say we have 20 more minutes. 20 more minutes? Yep. Good. Okay. Um, Guys, make me proud. <laughs>
So, some people are talking about interviews and podcasts and stuff like that. If anyone wants to invite us anywhere, just send us an email and we'll, we'll gladly come. If it's in French, I'll do it. If it's in English, we'll do it together. There's actually an interview that's coming on Monday with a French uh, YouTube channel called Pierrot. So, for the French people, you're going to enjoy it. Um, so, what else do we have? I'm trying to catch back. Um, what is your opinion on canonizing fan-made fan content? How would that work? I have no clue. Um, so a fan delivers something that we didn't sign off on and when we decide it's just part of the canon? I don't know. I, I imagine it would be like someone writes an adventure or, say, or part of the world that is super good and we decide to integrate it to the world by making it like an official booklet or well, something if, like that. If, if it's that good, we would offer the guy to work for us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. Like, if that good, then like, why, why, not, why not, you know, make an offer right away? Yeah. Um, yeah. What is your opinion? Okay, so we read this one. Uh, in the last edition, you mentioned the writings of Jeanne de Vazelay a lot. Will they come back and play a role in a later publishing? Um, this is. I mean, it's a random question. Jan de Vazelay yeah. is, uh, is an actual yes, figure yes. out of history. Um, like we quoted him because the prophecy that he left behind was so, so inspiring for the content that we were producing for the Genesis. So we, like he set the mood, but like he's not a he's not an actual character that uh, exists in the world of the Genesis. He's a historical figure. Do you have old material lying around that you can base the new stuff on, or is it all from scratch? Uh, I mean, like, you know how, how much old material is lying around. Like, I've, I have a, a whole Google Drive full of uh, half-written books and outlines for books. And, uh, I mean, so many of the things that, we've are, that we are writing today are, you know, having some... They are having some sort of... They were a seedling at one point yeah. in time, you know, back in 2015, 2016, 2017, when all the initial creative energy was flowing into, like, how to expand the game. And so when we, when we continue working on the new stuff today, like, of course, I look back into the original notes and I'm like, ah, yeah, we can take this, move it over to here. Yeah. Um, or this part was, that was actually meant for something else that can be shifted over to this one. So that, that's really helpful. It's, it, it just gives us a lot of a lot of groundwork and a lot of sketch material to work with, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I mean, you write, you write so much. <laughs> you write so much all the time. Why do I still have hair? Because Marco is taking over with the... I'm, 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 I'm protecting this kid. Like, we are at 19,000. Yeah. We are 900 bucks away. 900 from bucks from, from the, the next set. Yeah. Um, do you guys feel like the Genesis is a job or do you feel like you're not really working when working on it? Oh, it's a huge job. It's a huge job. Yeah. I mean, because we take it seriously. That's, that's why it's tremendously tiring and that's why a lot of energy is spent on it. Like, I, I don't have a 9-to-5 job. Yeah. Like, I, can't, I can't work on the Genesis from, you know, I don't know, 11.30 till 5 o'clock and then go home and like, um, have dinner and forget about it. That's not how it works. Like, mm -hmm. sometimes my creativity hits me at 6 p.m. and I spend... I, s I spend the night working until until midnight. Mm -hmm. um, it's a passion, you know. And when something is a passion, you take it extremely serious. But also because it's a passion, you don't suffer from working on it. You like you never feel. I never feel like I'm burning out on it. Yeah. Like, for me, it's completely normal um, uh, to to work on the property and expand the property as much as I can. Yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's it's different because I'm not writing. I'm not like producing the content. So Which is dealing with these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm dealing with you and the partners and all these yeah. kind of things. So it's completely different. Um, and some stuff just just keep... I mean, I, I don't disconnect from the Discord, for example, when I go back home. Because yeah. I, I still use Discord, so I, I, I check what people are, are writing and everything. I don't really feel like it's a job. I just feel like some stuff are really tough. Like when you have to deal with the warehouse that's completely flooded, it's not, it's yeah, not fun. Yeah. You have to spend four hours uh, <laughs> destroying boxes and saving books. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff are fun. Doing interviews is fun. Um, I mean, of course, always uh, communication with, yeah. with partners and, and uh, subcontractors is always tough. It's all, that, that always feels like work. Yeah, it dep depends who. Some people are really 
some people like Edge, for example, are really easy to work yeah. with. Um, some other partners are more complicated to work yeah. with. So it's always, it's always, it depends. And it depends on the day, like the mood and everything. Like it's, really, it's like a lot of things, uh, a lot of factors that go into it. Um, so what about the future of the nationals? We will probably do another round later. Uh, yeah, I mean, it would make sense to do it a, a year after yeah. the, the first one. So the community has time to grow. Yeah properly and then everybody is re-energized by the time that we announce it um and we also need to t need to have some time like to make to make up new prices you know <laughs> yeah, like, yeah we uh, can do the same thing over yeah. and over again uh, <laughs> agora ambush short story when <laughs> oh i'm gonna kill this guy um what is coming after africa and why is it the carbon well you'll see <laughs> Uh, the Genesis USA, still not. <laughs> um, have you ever thought about running the trailer on television in USA? So I think you people don't understand how expensive it is to run an advertisement <laughs> on, on, TV, on, on, television <laughs> on TV in the US. It is fiercely expensive. Maybe maybe we could run it in Azerbaijan or, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, like find some some country that you know like has a has an easier entry price or something it's like it's we're talking we're talking way beyond our annual budget yeah <laughs> it's like what like annual budget for everything like yeah yeah i don't i i, I don't get paid for the next year or something yeah. we do we do like 30 seconds yeah. on a, on a whatever t uh, channel okay we're 800 bucks away from um, the next one. Oh, good 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 uh, good um we have 10 13 more minutes um, go people, go, go, go. All right, keep, keep asking I'm some questions. I'm still warm. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about? Like, is, is there anything else that we, is there any news? Uh, I'm waiting, I'm <laughs> waiting for the good questions, man. The Genesis Disney Park, of course. Um, no. Um, no, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm excited about everything we've been doing. I'm excited that we're managing to deliver and managing fuck off <laughs> that we're managing to to deliver and to make people very happy with uh, with what has been delivered you know like it's yeah. uh, it's always a risk the more stuff you produce the more chances you have to get people unhappy yeah. or uh, uh, and so far as far as i can tell we've been doing pretty what's your what's your, what's the roadmap item you look forward to the most <sighs> mm. and why uh well at the start of the roadmap, I think I would have said the Enomoy. Mm -hmm. And now I think I'm going to say I'm, I'm hesitating between Exalters and Cathedral City. Just because Numarsus has been delivering so fucking hard that I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Exalters is not that far away. <laughs> no, it's not that far away. I mean, Exalters is uh, 890 euros away. Um, we'll get there. We'll uh, get there. Any chances of more info on the war page in the supplement, short story, Discord rent, etc.? Of course, yeah. Uh, but it's also slotted for next year. Everything that is outside of the current roadmap like, will happen next year and beyond. So just to, just to summarize one more time, Justician came out and the roadmap is supplementary to Justician. What happens next year will surprise a few people. So just a few, just, <laughs> uh, let, let me just leave it at that. As soon as we have material to showcase, as soon as we have material to hype next year, we'll do it anyways. Like there's no reason to sit on it, but give us a chance to finish the roadmap right now because we're really excited about it. Uh, planning any more sound pieces for the website, soundscapes for justician of the protectorate or beetle. Well, it ties back to the same things like producing those, those con this content falls back on Marco's shoulders, so if he works on it, he's not working on the roadmap items. Um, and it's also, I mean, the, our biggest problem on the audiobooks is that we don't know how to monetize them. Yeah. I mean, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a marketing investment, so we, we need to have marketing budget for it, produce them, release them, and yeah. then what do we get out of it? Like, like, are we really getting new players with it? Are we really getting new customers with it? I would love to do more, I mean, like I, I could do nothing else but doing doing audio stories the whole day, but like, what's the, what's, what's in it for us in terms of monetization, you know, like yeah. we, we need to, we, we, if we would do them, we would need to find a way to tie them into the roadmap as a secondary sub item or something um, that is co-funded through, yeah. through, um, you know, 
a, a monetization structure like that, but not, not by themselves. By themselves, you just generate, yeah. uh, you know, a budget loss. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, improving the roadmap and improving the website and everything is something that, as much as we want it to happen, it also requires a lot of time, and we are not devs. Uh, yeah. And if we want to keep working with the same devs, uh, it's a bigger, it's a big budget. Like, uh, yeah, it's like it's. I not mean, they deserve all the money. Oh, give no, no, them, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, that, not, what I'm saying is not like they don't deserve it, but yeah. it's like changing. Uh, I mean, adding more stuff to the website is a budget, and this budget doesn't come out of the thin hair. Yeah. Um, so, uh, will we see any more Tsar in the in near future? Uh, yeah. I think so. Probably. Mm -hmm. uh, second, second roadmap for audiobooks. <laughs> I mean, if no, not just. I mean, it would not make sense to be only audiobooks because yeah, the value, the value for the people funding it is so yeah. marginal. It's, yeah. uh, it's not a good thing. Uh, it could no. Nah. Uh, plot ideas for a group working for the carrion birds in Justician. Following arms way. I mean, you have a shit ton of them in, uh, in Justician. I think like between, like. I mean, fight the pit fights, uh, <laughs> like all the all the. the these I mean, you can do so much. You can play the Stukov cook that wants to open his own restaurant, but he doesn't have the money, and he needs to go lend it from the carrion birds, and he gets you know like like just watch a few gangster movies, and you have all the all the hooks you need. You just need to translate them into the the, the world of the Genesis and, and, and be a little bit creative about there's it. There's just so, like, so much. Any mafia movie will help you. Yeah, there's just so much you can do, and I think. I think it's just a, taking some time to actually think about what you what you want to convey, what kind of, kind of adventure do you want to play. Uh, like, uh, Carrion Burst is perfect for criminal or uh, yeah. just like playing young badass kids that want to uh, to make their uh, their identity in a big city. You know, like you have a lot of um, of things you can uh, you can see. And okay, do. where are we? Come on, last call. I think I think we're. It's not really moving. It's not it's, moving. It's not really moving. Um, uh, what else do we have? Uh, no, 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 no. Any thought on creating a paler slash sleeper book? A paler slash sleeper book? Yeah, like a, well, a book. Do, uh, I mean, just for what? For just having them together or? I don't know. I think it's because like Because the one is a cult and the other one is a... Yeah, is, is, some, is some is other a, people talk about like sleeper as a player class or something. <laughs> I don't think that's very smart, you know. Like I, I would, I, like I would always recommend to stay away from sleepers because it's just it's it's the game breaker yeah. in itself. Like I can I can see the appeal of wanting to play Buck Rogers, but that's not what sleepers are. You're an elite agent sent out of the past into the future to enslave mankind. Like there is nothing there's nothing really likable about them. <laughs> to be yeah, yeah, quite honest, they're not necessarily the the good guy. <laughs> Exactly. Like they're badass, but they're not the good guy. But plus, the game is not really designed around them being played. Um, yeah. The the power level is not. I mean, yeah, the power level is not what you would imagine. Um, the Genesis is a game about fill the uh, the blank. Or would you answer this? About the human condition extrapolated onto a very hostile future. I like that. I like that. Do we have we have money coming in? No. No. Um, no. What do you think Fernex and Verena are listening to on their road trip? What? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the highway I, I to hell or something. I don't want to answer the question. <laughs> um, which do you prefer working on? Adventures, clan supplements, or city guides? Wow. Oh, pff, that's awesome. That's very. Wow. Like, everything is fun to work on as long as it expands the world and is not boring. I think really what I hate working on is. Anything that bores me, and if it like, if there's anything that bores me, it's generic stuff. Like I don't like generic stuff. Generic stuff is the most unsatisfying thing to write about. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's why I focus on things that are not generic. Five minutes left, people. Uh, how much? How much do we need? Seven hundred and. Uh, six hundred ninety. Six hundred ninety. Uh, Last five minutes. You're still one hundred and twelve people. That's a six buck per, per, per people. Per people. <laughs> per people. Um, okay, we're. I don't hear any other questions so far, but I think it's been a very good live. Okay, it's been, it's I'll been, do the last the last couple. Uh, so that's uh, three. How many? Three. Three f so far. Oh yeah. Uh, 
Someone just said congrats on redefining RPGs. Okay, why? How did we do that? How did we do that? I don't know if you can hear him in the background. <laughs> Dana, how did we do that? Please let us know. Um, yeah, I mean, in the. Only three? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. And here we go. That's it for the day. Uh, what would be your choice for the Genesis tattoo? Ha <laughs> ha! Easy. The chroniclers, always. Um, still waiting on the De Genesis cookbook. You'll have to wait because it's not in the oven at all. Um, all right. Have you thought about more specific streams like live drawing or such focused in the Genesis? Yes, yes. there's going to be a live drawing stream in throughout September. S September. Yeah. With all the original artwork being done for the artwork uh, art books. Yeah. And then we're, we're jamming around all the time what we can do on the side. Yeah, we'll, we'll do yeah. more. We'll we want. Do more. We, we we will be using YouTube more. Uh, yeah. This yeah. The year. We like the format. Yeah. So. How much do we have to donate to get our one to deadlift? <laughs> <laughs> uh, fund the road <laughs> um, we'll see I trained Erwan for the last year and a half he's a really good deadlifter so uh, we'll you shouldn't see. underestimate him just because he's skinny he's strong we'll see we'll see um, but it's better that he deadlifts and uh, cuts his hair I don't know I like uh, I like the idea too but it's not the topic so people we have three minutes left um, I really want to First of all, thank you all. Like it's been amazing. Even if it's not quite funded yet, it's still fantastic. Like you, you guys. You guys are a bomb. Thanks for making me like sweat a, on camera. Two thousand seven hundred euros in a, in a, in an evening is a really fantastic. Like very very big thank you. I'm so happy we bought McDonald's. <laughs> Fuck! I'm so happy. Still I'm, just gonna, two, I'm just going to eat a cold cheeseburger right now. I'm so hungry. <laughs> um, we will probably be doing another live before. I don't. I don't want to say before I go on holidays, but I would love. I would love to be able to do another one. Yeah. Uh, so probably in the next few weeks. Then there's gonna be like a small social media silence because I'm gonna be out for a month, and Marco is gonna be working on the art books. Yeah. Um, in that period. Well, I'm. I'm gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. It's just not gonna be like loud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in that period, technically, if everything goes well, Lex Talionis should arrive somewhere in August. Yeah. Something like this. Yeah. Exalters is very close to being finished, so it will go into production as soon as Lex Talionis yeah. is uh, finished. And, and then after that, Cathedral City. We'll have yeah. more stuff to talk about it, um, in the future. Uh, again, for everyone that is not sure yet if they want to donate to the roadmap, every Friday we send an exclusive newsletter. In the future, we're going to be doing some uh, exclusive discounts and stuff like that for you, some exclusive products on the shop for people that donate. So if that's something that interests you, you can in the future, uh, make some donations. Talk about the game online. Um, if you want to do interviews with us, just contact us. If you have ideas of who you could talk to, go uh, go talk to them so that they can, can contact us. Subscribe to the channel so that in the future you receive all the notifications and we'll see you soon. That was a fantastic evening. And stay cool and be awesome and support us and what, do whatever you like, play the game. Enjoy the game, read up on the game, discuss the game, talk to us as well. Uh, yeah. Love you, love you people. Go Thanks on. for being around. Thanks for helping us do the, all of this. Thank you so much, people. Have a nice evening and see you very soon. Bye-bye. Au revoir. Bye-bye.